Hi everyone, let's start with the practical part of our tutorial. At first, we are going to provide a name to our e story. For example, Arabidopsis Transcriptant Analysis. Then, we are going to upload our datasets from Zenodo. In order to do that, we are going to use our tabular data provided in the training. We should copy it, then select the uploader tool by using the rule basic method, select collection and paste our table of data and build. Now we are going to provide some rules. We should click on the rules, add and modify rules, add definition, then list of identifiers and select the column A. Now add definition, collection name and select column B. After that select URL and column C. And finally add definition, type and select the column D. Now apply and finally upload. Now, meanwhile, we are going to upload the rates of our datasets. Now we should copy the tabular data of the additional datasets and select the uploader tool, select datasets, paste the tabular data and build. Once again, we are going to create two rules. A definition, name and select the column A. And URL and select the column B. Then apply and upload. Now we have all our required datasets available in Galaxy. Once the process of uploading has been finished. Now we can check the contents of one of the collection. Now we can open a FATQ file. We can see four lines for each read, the sequence identification, the reads, and the coding, the line encoding the quality. Now we can add a few tags in order to identify your sequence. Now, for example, in this case, we can add brassinosteroids and microRNA. Now everything is ready. Here we can see the additional datasets that we are going to require, for it, which include the annotation, the whole transcriptome and a few additional datasets. The next step is to evaluate the quality of our reads, for which you, we are going to use the tool FastQC. Then we shall open a collection, select the control microRNA, Leave the rest of the parameters as default and repeat the same process with the Brassinosteroid treated dataset. FastQC provides a simple way to do some quality control on our reads. Now we can check the results of this tool. It generates two different outputs. Here we can see it, the different information that which it provides, like the per type sequence quality, per sequence quality scores, per base sequence content, per sequence GC content, per base unknown base content, sequence length, 
sequence duplication and over representing sequence. Here we can see some of the adapters which are present in our reads. Now in order to compare the results of the two treatments, we are going to merge the outputs of FastQCL. In order to do it, we are going to use the tool Merge Collection in single list of datasets. We are going to look for this tool. Here is no, this this one, and we are going to select the collection, the control, and the brassinosteroid route collections, and execute. Now the, we have the raw reports merged in a single list. After that, we are going to use the multi QC tool in order to generate a report. Select collection at the merged one. Now we are going to provide our title. For example, initial quality assignment and execute. In that way, we'll be able to visualize of all datasets in a single report. As we can see, MultiQC generate two types of outputs: an HTLM and a stats file. You can check the stat file, it provides raw information. But the most interested one is the HTML file. Here we can see the information that it provides. As we can see, our reads includes a lot of duplicate reads, for example. Also, it provides information about the quality scores the per sequence quality scores here we can compare the value of all of data sets as we can see all of them show similar trends as we can see a high percentage of our reads include adapters which will be necessary to remove as they can interfere with subsequent analysis. To remove the adapters, we'll use the Tringalor tool. Now select Tringalor, Collection, Control, Collection, select the Illumina small RNA adapters and execute. Now we should repeat the process with the Brassinosteroid treated collection. Select the Lumina small RNA adapters and execute. The next step is to evaluate once again the quality of our reads after the processing by Tringalor. Now we should select the fast QC tool, select the processor reads, control collection and execute. And we should do the same with the Brassinosteroid treated collection. As we did before, we need to merge the output generated by FastQC. Now we should wait a little bit and select Merge Collection Tool. It's 
select the collection of the control of the Brasinosteroid treated collection and execute. And once we get the merged collection, we should once again use the multi QC tool in order to generate the report. Select multi QC tool and the collection, the merged collection. Now we are going to provide a report title, for example, post processing quality assessment and execute. Once we have obtained the quality report of the processing sequence, we are going to compare the quality parameters before and after having processed the samples, for which we are going to use the scratch book option. Now we, can, we should select scratch book and Open the visualization of both reports side by side. In that way, it will be quite easy to compare them. Here we have the initial quality assignment and the pre post processing quality assignment. As we can see, we have a quite similar amount of duplicated reads after, before and after the processing. The quality histograms are also quite similar. The per sequence quality scores have been improved after the trimming. We can also compare the per base sequence content. Also, we can see the per sequence EC content has been improved in our reads. The, in the case of the sequence leg, we can see that the original reads have all of them similar length. And after the trimming, we have reads with different size. The duplication level are quite similar. Also, the overrepresented sequence show a similar pattern, and the adapter content. We can see we have removed all the adapters. Now we can start with the quantification of the microRNAs. It will be done by using the MIRDIP tool. Then let's go to the tool search bar and here we have three models we are going to use MIRDIP to mapper and the MIRDIP2 quantifier. First, we'll use MIRDIP2 mapper. We should select the control processed collection and we should select collapse and execute. Now we are going to repeat the process with the Brazilian steroid treated collection. Here is, we should select it, once again select collapse and execute. The collapse tool ensures that each sequence only occurs once. To indicate how many time reads the sequence represents, a suffix is added to each FASTA identifier. Now we are going to use the mirror depth quantifier tool. 
we are going to select that first the control collection now we shall select the precursor sequence the mature micro RNA sequence and the start sequence all those files are required in order to perform the quantification now we should left the rest of the parameters of default and execute now we should repeat the process with the brassinosteroid treated collection once again we should select each of the datasets and execute this tool map the reads to predefine microRNA precursors and determines by that the expression of the corresponding microRNAs. Firstly, the predefined major microRNA sequence are mapped to the predefined precursors. Then, the predefined star sequence are mapped to the precursors too. This tool generates two types of outputs. The raw reads, which include the information such as the microRNA names, the real counts, the precursors, and the normalized counts. And it also provides an HTML file with additional information, such as the mid based precursors, the mature with counts, the star read counts and the major sequence, the mid base star sequence and the precursor sequence. Before performing the differential expression analysis, it is necessary to extract the first two columns from the quantification files. Those columns include information about the microRNA identificator and the read counts. Then we shall select the two good columns from a table and select the first two columns, select the collection of the control sequence and execute. And we shall repeat the process with the brassinosteroid treated collection. and execute now everything is ready for performing the differential expression analysis we can have a look to the outputs now we are going to use the desk 2 tool and we should specify a factor name for example effect of brassine steroids we specify the first factor level which will be the brassine steroids select the collection corresponding to the brassine steroids which is the 104 Then specify the second factor which is the control and select the corresponding collection. Now we should unset the files have a header option and leave the rest of the parameters of default and execute. DSEC2 is a popular tool for gene level differential expression analysis. It used the negative binomial distribution, employing a slightly more stringent approach compared to other methods. It provides a good balance between sensitivity and specificity. DSEC2 generates 
two different types of outputs plots and the differential expression data file let's have a look to each of them one of the plots generated but the sec2 is the principal component analysis plot which provide insight into the association between the samples as we can see the x-axis includes the 46% of the variances of the samples. Other plots generated by the sec tool are the sample-to-sample -sample distance, which provide similar information to the PCA plot, the dispersion estimates, histogram of p-values, and the MA plot. Now, let's check the tabular data generated by the sec 2 It provides diverse statistics, such as the mean expression, the fault chain, the standard error, the wall statistics, the p-value, and the p-adjusted value. The p-value is a measure of the probability that an observed difference occurs just by random chance. On the other hand, the p-adjusted value takes into account the fault discovery rate, which is necessary when we are measuring thousands of variables. Now, we are going to filter those genes that show statistically significant expression differences between the two experimental conditions. Now we should select the output of desk 2 select the column number 7, which corresponds to the p-adjusted value, and execute. To perform differential expression analysis, it's recommended to use at least three biological replicates of each experimental condition. In addition, another important factor in determining the statistical power the sample size. Let's take a look at the results. Unfortunately, we haven't identified any gene with significant differential expression. This is caused by the fact that our sample size is not large enough, since we have used a sample obtained from the original data. Let's repeat this last step by using the full microRNA dataset. We should copy the Zenodo file address provide a proper name, for example, microRNA desk tool complete dataset and start. Now we are going to repeat the filtering process with this new dataset. Select the previous result. Now we are going to select the complete dataset and execute. And let's check the results. When using the original data, the statistical power is significantly increased, since the samples are 100 times larger in size. In this case, we have identified 39 genes whose differential expression is statistically significant. Finally, we'll filter out the upregulated microRNAs. Let's select the previously filtered dataset and set the column 3 higher than 0. In this way, we'll keep only those transcripts whose fault chain is greater than 0. Finally, we have obtained 16 microRNAs 
whose expression shows a significant increase in brassinosteroid treated samples with respect to the control samples. And that's all. I hope you enjoy.